And here we have it, the man of the hour, the good-looking bastard that he is. Please welcome actor Greg Finley, which his movie is coming out October 30th this year. He's the lead. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Eddie? Thank you for having me. Oh, absolutely. You know, Greg, you look like the type of guy that when you were in high school, were you like the quarterback and all the cheerleaders wanted you? Were you that guy? Because you got that oh, look. You know what I mean? I didn't, I didn't even play football. I played soccer. Uh-huh. Uh, I played basketball and I played baseball. But, yeah, no, I didn't even play football. You didn't play football at all? At all? No. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, I did okay in high school. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure you did. But, you know, you just got that look. Like, you got that All-American look. A good looking dude, it's like, you know, you got that athletic jock look, which is a good thing. I'll take it. I'll take it. Exactly. <laughs> when you were in high school, I like when did acting exist? When did you really want to become an actor? I mean, that's a very long story. That didn't happen until until after high school. So um my freshman year into college I got really sick. Mm -hmm. I uh I had a rare throat infection. Oh. And, like, I had an abscess in my throat. I had to be rushed to the hospital. It's a very, very long story. And so I was bedridden for a long time. And uh, all I would do was watch movies. My mom would bring me DVDs. And, you know, my senior year to my, like, end of my freshman year in college, I went through a lot. And uh, and that's kind of when acting came about, when I would kind of be lost in those in those stories and, and whatnot. And... Uh, I don't know if it was the Percocet I was on or whatever, but I just decided, you know, I can do this. I want to try it. So I drove out to L.A. So you actually moved at 19 years old. Yeah, 19, yeah. Drove out, yeah. When, what did you tell your parents when you told them, hey, I'm moving to L.A. and I want to become an actor, and you're 19 yeah. years old? I'm sure they said something and they gave you a yeah. warning. I don't remember the first time I told my parents. I remember it was January 7th, 2005. Mm -hmm. I kissed my mother and said, I'm not coming back till I make it. And that was January 7, 2005. Wow. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> so just like that, you told her, I'm not coming back until I make it. Yeah, I didn't know what the hell I was going to do. I was a terrible student. Um, I don't even really, to be honest with you, think I would have finished college anyway. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, just, I just went for it, yeah. So you're telling me... Because you got sick, and because your mom brought DVDs, you were watching movies, and then yeah. you said, "You know what? I'm gonna change my career." Like, yeah, it was like it's like that it, that escapism, like uh, you know, when you're when you're down and out, and you're watching a movie or you're watching a show, and I just wanted to escape my reality, and I I thought, let's try to turn that into a career. That's unbelievable. Now, yeah. when you got sick, was it a life-threatening? Like yeah, so when I went into the hospital, when they, when they brought me into the emergency room in Maine there, um, they had to bring in the throat specialist. And like they put me down with, uh, like, they had the nurses holding me back. And then the throat specialist came in with his, like, I think, they, I don't know if he had two daughters or his, he had two kids. Mm -hmm. His wife was with him. He was, like, in his bathrobe. He came in. And they performed the surgery, and he said if I would have, like, fallen asleep that night, like, taking a bunch of pain pills and just tried to, like, sleep it off, um, it, I would it would have burst, and it would have went into my bloodstream, and I would have been done in, like, 15 seconds. Oh, my God, the, man. The comedian Sarah Silverman, uh -huh. she, the same thing happened to her. I think she talks about it on one of her stand-ups. I've seen it. Is it a rare disease? Is it rare? Well, it's an abscess. An abscess, it, it can cut, you know, you can get them from, you know, like an infected cut. Mm. And it was created because my tonsils were inflamed. I should have got my tonsils out when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And my tonsils were getting so inflamed that it created an abscess. And it got like an infection and I just let it go. Oh, okay. Then, you know, I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, you know? yeah. So when you move to L.A., you don't know anybody there, right? Not a soul. Not not one person. Didn't, didn't know anybody that knew anybody. Nobody. So what's uh, like? How much money did you have on you? <laughs> that you actually? Well, I, 
few hundred bucks, to be honest with you. How much? I stayed at, I stayed at the Hollywood Star Inn in, like, East East Sunset. Mm -hmm. It smelled like ramen noodles. Mm -hmm. um, it was, like, 25 bucks a night. Uh-huh. Eat McDonald's tw twice a day and just kind of go. I would, like, submit myself online. You know, L.A. Was it L.A. Casting? L.A. Casting, LA. yeah. And I think Actors Access, too. Actors Access and... Um, yeah, you know, I was in the mall one day and I was on the, on my cell phone. I was talking to my brother and I was like, "I freaking hate LA. I hate this place." And and this woman was in the parking garage. It was at the Beverly Center, and she was kind of staring at me. And I was like, "What is this woman staring? At? What?" The? And and I was on the phone. I was like, I was bitching to my brother. And uh, she said, can I ask you something? And I said, yeah. And she says, are you an actor? And I said, I'm trying to be. And I you know, got off the phone with my brother. She goes, you know, I see something in you or whatever. And, and she gave me her card. And I, I gave the card to a girl I was seeing. And she says, do you know who this is? This is head of casting for, I don't know if it was CBS or NBC. They were casting Ben Stiller's um, wife's pilot. And they wanted me to go. She wanted me to go and read for the brother. And I think I was too young, but they thought I was okay. So from there, I got an agent. Oh wow! Look at you. Listen, you're getting some luck there. But huh? that was like, but that was like two and a half years of being in LA, and you know, doing every side job you can. But yeah, I mean, I, I was, you know, two three years, and to start working, I'm, I was very lucky. Your side jobs? What were they? I'm guessing busboy, waiter. Busboy, busboy, bus waiter. Um, I worked at a clothing store uh, on Melrose. And, uh, yeah, just the, the typical, you know, starving artist job, yeah, you know? Yeah, But you yeah. were young. You were very young. I was 19, and then I booked I booked my first regular gig when I was 23, so you, there, were you, some, there, were some, there were some years there. You know? So from 19 to, like, what, 23 years old, you had nothing going on, right? I booked, uh, I booked a guest star in Cold Case. That was yeah, your first? That, that got me in the union, mm -hmm. but I mean, guest star, you know? And then I got arrested right after I got the guest star. Wait, 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 uh, hold on. Tell me about the arrest. How'd that uh, happen? Yeah, that, that was a long, that's a long story. <laughs> you could cut it in half. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was St. Patty's Day, what was it, 2006 or seven? Mm -hmm. I think it was 2007. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a drunk fight that <laughs> I ended up getting arrested for and then like that was right when i got my sad card it was like st patty's day we were celebrating and then uh and then yeah and then a year later i booked i booked the abc family show and that went for five years but so. you also now here's the thing um it took you three years did you go to acting class did you take acting classes were no i went to one acting class and i just uh I don't know. I didn't. I wasn't feeling it, and then I just, I just left, and yeah. Holy shit, Greg! That's I, amazing. It's a great story, you know. I, mean. I just, I just watched a lot of movies and studied actors that I respected, and 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 then luckily with the show, the ABC Family Show was just so. It was such. It was just dialogue, 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 and and it was really, um, you know, you had to learn your. It was almost like a soap opera. You know, and so that was kind of good training, I think, to memorize the lines and to yeah. grow. I mean, I was terrible in the beginning, and then you just grow. Like they say, the best, the best kind of school you can go to is actually doing it, right? Oh, absolutely. Your so, your experience is your best teacher. Now you're talking about yeah. the show, The Secret Life of the American Teenager, right? Emmy Emmy Award winning, now. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, hold on a minute, Greg. Think about this, man. You're 23 years old. You got a show booked for six years, 120 episodes. Yeah. What'd you do with your money? Let's see if you're smart with your money back then. I got a condo. Oh, so you bought my, a condo. Yeah, the first thing uh, the first thing my father told me was get a condo, get a condo, get a condo. So, yeah, I was pretty smart. I wasn't the smartest, I can tell you that. <laughs> there were a lot of Vegas nights. <laughs> There were a lot of, uh, you know, things like that. But, yeah, I was I was pretty good. So when, when you know, like, 
people will come up to you in LA or in Vegas and they tell you, hey, what do you do for a living? And then you tell them, yeah, I'm on this show, right? You got to be all humble about it, right? And all of a yeah, sudden... I, I really wouldn't um, tell people, like, sometimes, like, because what I found early on is, like, when you tell people, like, you know, I'm not famous, so, like, people aren't like, we're that guy, you know? Mm -hmm. So, so when people would come up to me, I would just say I did like real estate or something like that. I still mm -hmm. do that. Cause then they just ask 50,000 questions about, you know, yeah, you know. yeah exactly. No. I know. I, I've been, there. <laughs> I know what it's like. <laughs> so after now, um, what was the schedule like? And, and, and where would you guys shoot that? And what network was it on? It was on ABC family. It's called Freeform right now. Oh, okay. And we would do, I think they were eight day episodes. And, you know, it was, I'll be honest, it was the easiest job I ever had. Like some, some episodes I'd work, you know, five days, mm -hmm. some days I'd work six days on an episode, some days I'd work one day on an episode, you know, it just depended yeah. on the storyline. Mm -hmm. you know. Greg, um, very at the audition, when you auditioned The Secret Life of the American Teenager, mm -hmm. did you have to go through like a basic audition, producer audition, studio testing oh. and network testing? Did you go through all that? All that, all that, yep. Then you have the chemistry read with the other girl or guy, and you know how that is. Yeah, yeah. It's hell. Yeah, yeah it's, it's yep. hell. Did yep. you remember uh, anybody, uh, was it between you and two other people in the final testing? I mean, I, I would assume so, yeah. I don't remember the other two. You only remember the ones that you don't get, right? Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember anyone else. Did you, after The Secret of the American Teenager, you would think, you know what, the show, uh, I'm done, but you know what, I'm going to probably get a lot of stuff, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, huh, what's going on there, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, you're 23. I, I, you know, I had struggled for a few years before that, so I wasn't, like, I was beyond spoiled to be on a show for five years, but I also knew, you know, like, I was very lucky. And yeah. so I knew it would be a grind always to keep working. Um, but during that time, like that, that show was very popular with the ratings. Mm -hmm. So we would get picked up very quickly. So the whole pilot season, I don't know how many of your listeners are familiar with pilot season, but when the new shows come out and you got to audition for them, you know, I, I, we didn't really experience pilot season because we had 24 episodes, 24 episodes, 24 oh, episodes. So, that first pilot season after Secret Life was nerve wracking for sure. Because then when you work, you want to, you know, you want to keep working. You know, you don't want to end up back where you started. But the momentum, you know, you're feeling good, right? And, yeah, right? I mean, I booked the series regular right after that. Right, you you booked the show, but it lasted what? How many years did that show last? One year. So there you go. Right One there. Season. So it's like so back it's, to the unemployment well, card right after that, right? You're like shit. One season. And I had a blast on that show. I loved the character. I loved the, the cast and crew. And we were shooting in New Orleans. I was having the time of my life in, in one season. But what what show was that? Said, that was called Starcross. Oh, okay. So that character right there, you were a badass, huh? I, I, see, I see you was, right there. I, he was like a badass alien. Yeah. But with that said, like, I'm grateful that I got that whole season, you know? Yeah. So you just have to be grateful when the work comes, really. Were there any pilots that you auditioned and tested that became a hit show? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Can you name some? The first, the first show I ever tested for was mm -hmm. Friday Night Lights. Oh, shit. You'd be perfect for that, man. <laughs> and Scott Porter, like I said, you don't remember the guys that don't get it. You remember the guys that do get it. Uh -huh. Scott Porter got the role. He, They flew him in from New York. And my dumb ass, like, he was such a nice guy, right? So I brought him home. He didn't have a ride. I remember bringing him home when it was him and I testing for the role. I'm like, oh, bro, I'll bring you home. He was staying at some hotel. You know, I should have pushed him out of the fucking car. <laughs> <laughs> you should have, you should have, you should have put him back, you know, that, where you're from, you know, that neighborhood, yeah. you know, you guys like, who, who is this guy? Knock him out, yeah. done, and you're in, right? <laughs> but, you know, and he did, what, five seasons of that show or more, and, and it was it. Huge, huge hit. And that was before Secret Life. So that was really hard to swallow, like getting that close, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not getting it. That was tough. Any other ones besides uh, Friday Night Lights? 
I mean, movies. There's been movies I've almost gotten. Um, but you just try to uh, you try to put them out, put them behind you. You know. Yeah, yeah. A lot of the big, a lot of the big military movies. Um, I almost got that other guys got for whatever reason, probably because they were better. You know, I don't really look at it too much. Like, yeah. Why did this freaking guy get it and not me? That'll just drive you crazy. You know. Greg, as an actor, do you ever doubt? You know, when you when you audition a lot and you're not getting stuff, do you say to yourself, "Man, do I suck or what's the problem?" Like, do you have any thoughts like that? Every time. Yeah. I have okay. that working, and I'm if I'm one of the leads, I have that. You know, you always have that insecurity. But I think Jack Nicholson says you just prepare as much as you can, and you just grip it and rip it, right? You just mm -hmm. go in there and do your thing. So when you audition, do you, um, is there a specific style like you love to audition? Like, how do you prepare? How do you break down a script? I just, I, I have to know it in and out. Mm -hmm. And then once I know it in and out, I just kind of see what, what the goal of each scene is for the character. If he's trying to get something out of the scene and focus on that and, and just get lost in it. And then when you're prepared that much, you just, at action, you just throw it all out and you just try to be in the moment. And you react to the other person, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, you know what it is? It's like, you're so simple. I love it. It's like... <laughs> you just try to make it real, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it, now, when your parents, when they, when you got the gig, you know, let's reverse a little bit, um, The Secret Life of American Teenager, where they're yeah. like... Oh my God, my son's gonna make it! Oh my God, yes, he's on his show, yeah. right? I mean, they they supported me like just you know emotionally, and you know I was on my own. Like they said, because you know I was lucky enough to where my father was paying for my school, you know, my mm -hmm. college. So when I decided not to go back to college, he was like, "You're on your own," you know, and and I wouldn't change that. Well, maybe I would change that. There were some <laughs> times out there, but I wouldn't change it because it made made me you know, so happy, and I think it made them so proud when I when I did it on my own like that, you know? But yeah, they were very proud. Well, you grew up blue-collar, right? You didn't grow up with money. I mean, your your parents no. are working. Yeah, I've been working, washing dishes since I was like, you know, 13 years old. Oh, so they told so, you, if you want to make money, you better earn it. That's what they taught you. Yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, that's good. I, I love hearing stories like that, because... You know, where you're from, it's similar to, like, the, you know, New York City. You know, it's like you're on the yeah. hustle. You know, you got to work. You have to. Yeah. And it makes you appreciate everything when you if you get some stuff, you know? So here we go. Let's talk about this moment right here. So okay. I talked to Danny A. last night. Oh, boy. At 3 a.m. He's in Tel Aviv, Danny Israel. Danny A. at 3 a.m.? 3 a.m. Talk Woo! to... <laughs> Actually, it's 3 a.m. right now in Israel, Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, um, I asked him, I said, how did you get the role? And he told, and he told me the story. So I'm going to ask you this. This is another great timing for you. If Justin Timberlake's wife wasn't pregnant, would you portray Jackie Ryan? Is that what, is that, is that what he said? That's what he said. I knew, yeah, I mean, I knew, I knew Timberlake was attached at some point to do the role. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know it was because he was, his wife was pregnant or what have you. And yeah, I, I, what Danny had told me is I think she got, he got, like, he was going to do it and then he couldn't do it and then mm -hmm. he just got maybe a little too old. And then, uh, and then I don't know how the hell I ended up doing it, but I did it. Yeah. Well, they were out to a lot of people. They, they, um, you know, I'm very lucky. Well, according to Danny, he said that he had 120 self tapes, and when he saw your tape, he told his executive producer, "Hey, this is the guy, yeah. right here." Yeah. So, can you remember what you did for the self tape? Yeah. So I put I put the scenes on. Mm -hmm. And then I felt like I felt I knew I could do the role. Well, first of all, I'm coming out of Sam's Club, 
with my girl, mm -hmm. and I get the audition, and I see the breakdown, and it's like, Brooklyn street ball player, you know, I'm like, oh, fuck, this is awesome. And then I'm reading it, it's like, one of the greatest street ball players of all time, and I'm like, I I'm a white guy, like, this isn't gonna, how am I gonna get this role? Because then I saw it was like a true story, I'm like, what the hell? And so I looked them up, and I looked up Jackie, and I looked a lot like Jackie, right? Yeah, and yeah. Like, oh, shit, and I looked at my girl, and I'm like, I think I'm gonna book this, just because of the breakdown of the role, you, you just connect to a role sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you know, right? Or you don't know. And a lot of the times I don't know. Most of the time I don't know. But this one I kind of felt. So yeah, I, I, I put the tape on and uh, and then I filmed myself playing a little bit. And then I don't know where you're going with this. What, did Danny tell you something? Nah, man, just open up, man. What are you hiding for? <laughs> no, I, I think I, I think I, what, when I filmed the thing and I told him about myself? No, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm asking you personally, how did you, what did yeah. you do at the audition? Because I asked him, I said, hey, what about the basketball skills? I mean, that's the number one priority. First, you got to act, but then you got to know how to play too now. Yeah, yeah. So I filmed myself hooping a little bit and, uh, you know, twirling the basketball on my finger because Jackie was known, you know, for his tricks like that. Mm -hmm. and, then I, and then I just, like, put the phone up, you know, because I knew they wanted me, but, you know, I'm not a name or anything, so right. so – I knew they were hesitant, as they should be. Um, so I just kind of like set the phone up and, and sat there and, and talked to the phone and as I was talking to Danny and just told him, like, listen, I know I can do this role. Da -da -da -da, I connect with it. I can hoop. So, and I think what, from what Danny told me, he really liked that I did that. So. And then you got the phone call and says, you're the guy. Yeah. I, yeah. It okay. was great. It was a great feeling. <laughs> oh yeah. my god yeah. so when you met jackie ryan for the first time did you like try to study his uh you know movements his his yeah, style I mean, they got the, they got the Net netflix documentary losers mm -hmm. about jackie and then they got a great documentary on youtube about him so i watched those like i don't even know how many times so i really tried to study the way he talked um you know his his you know he was obviously a righty and i'm a lefty and I told Danny right from the jump, I said, if you want to make this look real, you just got to let me be a lefty and let the audience you know, help for themselves. And if they're going to, you know, get on you about that, whatever, because I try to shoot righty and I try to do all this stuff righty. And, you know, it's like I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I just could not do it. So, yeah, I studied Jackie and I met Jackie. And, you know, at the end of the day, you have to you have to do justice to the person you're playing. But then also you have to bring your own thing to it as well. No, you're right about that, yeah. And the cool thing with Jackie is he's such an individual that I feel like if you try to be too much like him, you, you'll come off fake. So See, there has to be some piece of you in you, there you, as you, well. Yeah, it'll be a caricature. You have to use yourself. Yeah. You know, you have a little he's, essence. He's so, yeah, he is so animated and he's such a specific character that you have to just kind of go there, right? Mm -hmm. so, so luckily I was able to do that. And how many months did you guys shoot? It was quick. It was like a three and a half week shoot. But how much fun did you have, man? Playing basketball. I mean, come on a, now. It was a blast. And it was in, you know, in New York. And, you know, I went out to Brooklyn before and to see, like, you know, Jackie's Element. And uh, it's so crazy how much of a legend Jackie is. We were playing horse. Mm -hmm. Me, Dick. Antonio, the writer, and Jackie were playing a horse, and this grown man, maybe in his, like, 45, 50 years old, comes around, we're at the park in New York, and it was like he saw Jordan. He was like, whoa! And he was, like, walking up to, to Jackie, so he was like, you Jackie Ryan? And then, you know, everyone's got a Jackie Ryan story. And it was like he saw Michael Jordan. It was crazy to see, like, how people react to him. These kids from Italy were at the park, came up to him and asked him for his autograph. It was wow. interesting, you know. Do you guys click together when you uh, when you talk? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. He's a brother. He's 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 the man. Yeah. He's got such a huge heart. And he's so likable. You know. He's such a yeah. he's such a character. Well, you can't not like him. I'm looking at your picture, you and him right now. I mean, you do look right. similar, man. Even the hairline and everything. I'm like, oh shit. That's that's why when I said to my girl when I saw the picture of him, 
when I looked them up, I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm going to book this thing <laughs> because I couldn't believe it. Usually if you go out for like someone that you're playing, like you go out for somebody that it was a real person and I have in the past, I'm like, eh, I don't know if I look like him or something. But this guy, I was like, oh my God. Well, you know, not necessarily you have to look like him, but if you could portray him just a little bit, get it, an essence of him, you know, yeah, you, you could do it. You know, yeah. um, did you do, did you have a, you know, did you talk like a uh, Brooklyn accent? Was he talking like that? Yeah. Because I have, I have like a New England accent, you know, mm-hmm. so my, my ahs and, and my coffee and the, the, the ah, everything's an ah. You had to do all. And that was very hard. And, and I don't know, and I'm, I'm going to start doing it because I'm going back into the. Go ahead, um, go ahead. Give me some, you know, just a vowel because when we say. You got, and the, the lead, my best friend in the movie's name is. His name's Marty. Marty. I would say Marty. Marty. Yeah. But it was Marty. Marty. You know, and Jackie in the movie, he's angry all the time. So, you know, when you're acting and you're angry, you're real, you know, mm-hmm. at least for me, my real voice will come out. So there was a couple Marty's in there and I had to reel in the, mm-hmm. you know, the all. I got it all. Yeah, Marty. the all. The A-W. The A-W. And, you know, it's the same thing with Lon- Londoners, you know, when they say, like, I got to talk to you, they have that all with anything with the, you know, talk, dog, you know, yeah. walk, you know. It's just with London, when we say pass, they say pass. So that their our a ah is theirs ah. Yeah. With the A. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, speak- I had a dialect coach for a while, and I was working with her. She did a great job. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know if it was perfect. Ah, uh, what you worried about, man? I think it's gonna be great. I <laughs> don't. There's body right there. Exactly. Now speaking of, listen, you gotta love James Matteo, the actor. I mean, come on, man. This guy. The first time you met him, and that was your best friend in the film. I know you guys clicked in a second. Yeah, I mean, just you know, Jimmy's one of those people that you, like everyone clicks with, right? No one doesn't click with Jimmy. Um, but I was so nervous to meet him. Because basketball diaries and Hook. I mean, you know, I'm 35. Brothers. You know, so Hook was everything, and and uh, and Leo is like a hero. You know, he's mm-hmm. he's here for me. So like, Basketball Diaries was a huge movie that influenced me as an actor and made me want to be an actor. That was one of those movies, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like wicked nervous when I met Jimmy, but he was so cool. I met him at the bar at the hotel. And we shot the shit, and yeah, man, it was me and him in that movie. Most oh, yeah. most of my scenes are with him. He he's a sweetheart, and you know what, Jimmy? I I talked to Jimmy today actually. I said, hey, give me the scouting report about Greg. He goes, listen, Eddie, I've been in this business for a while. Nobody is like him. He is so professional. He was there on time. He was so prepared. Like he was really impressed. With you because you know this was your big you know you're the lead man you're the guy yeah 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 it's a lot of um it's a lot of pressure you know mm-hmm. being number one you gotta uh you gotta be professional you know I didn't want to fuck it up for everybody else <laughs> yeah he's um and he told me something to mention he said something with turtle tell me that story <laughs> turtle something I forgot the second word. <laughs> Turtle Tank. So he wanted to get the line because we improved a lot. Danny had us improving a lot, and mm-hmm. uh, he wanted to use Turtle Tank. Like this smells like a turtle tank. Like mm-hmm. you know, this car smells like a turtle tank. And he would try to get it in. He would try to get it in, and then let's just say he got it in. Oh, okay. What <laughs> was yeah. he bitching about it? He's like, I can't believe I didn't get it no, in today. He, like you know, it was like one of those like funny like things on set every day he's like all right how can how can i fit this in and he it was perfect and then you you never know if it's going to make the final cut you know in the mm-hmm. edit so and then um the girl that played uh tell me the story about uh jackie ryan was it his uh, wife or was it his, was it his girlfriend yeah, it was that's why played... it was his girlfriend at the time of, mm-hmm. of the story takes place but her name is jenny mm-hmm. like ashley green um Ashley kills it. I mean, Ashley's mad at Jack, or Jenny is mad at Jackie the whole time in the movie, and Ashley just reamed into me in these scenes and stole every scene that we're in together. I mean, she was crushing it the whole time. So obviously, I knew who Ashley was because of you know her work in Twilight and yeah. stuff like that. And, but she really brought it, man, every day. 
I was impressed. So she played a typical Brooklyn girl and always uh, yeah. stood up for herself. Yeah. She had the tood and she was standing up for herself. And yeah, there's some scenes in there where you're like, whoa. whoa. But you were, you were, you were like a, you were a hothead, right? Was that your character? Yeah, part Jackie, of the... Jackie, you know, in that time of his life, he was messing up. I mean, he messed up everything. He messed up his chances with her. He messed up his chances with the NBA. You know, he was just fucking up all the time. And, uh, you know, that was, and she let him know, but she was like the, the kind of his, you know, rock through all that stuff. Wow. So his story, basically, he had a shot to play the NBA or had an opportunity and he just kept fucking up. Was he irresponsible or he just didn't give a shit? You name it. I mean, I think at that point in his life, all he wanted to do was drink, you know? get laid, play ball. I mean, that's it. He didn't, he wasn't really focused at all. And, um, you know, he had a huge chip on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that stems, you know, a lot from his father who was played by David Arquette, who again, just crushes it and steals every scene. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, I think he had that and yeah, he was drinking and just fucking up. And that's what the movie's about. It was, it was, it, you know, it's, I told Danny, I'm like, it's challenging to, to root for this guy. But the thing of it is, is, you know, that's the story. And that's the story we're telling. And the, and the post, you know, after the movie, it's when he had his daughter, Morgan, who that's when he really changed his life and turned his life around. Oh, wow. So you had to, you, uh, I mean, were you really drinking on set? Be honest. Yeah. You, Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I probably shouldn't say that. Sorry, Danny. Well, sometimes you got to get that little feel. I'm sure you can do it every yeah, day, but I'm you drinking know. right now, I'm drinking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sometimes you just got to do it. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Um, yeah. so I'm imagining. I ain't see the film yet, but I'm thinking what you did was you were a hothead. You didn't give a shit what people thought of you. Um, you know, people kept encouraging you. Yo, you got a shot. They try to give you advice. But you ignored it because you didn't give a fuck. Yeah, and I think deep down, he did care what people thought. Mm-hmm. And he did care. But, you know, whether it was his age and he was insecure or if it was like he had the chip on his shoulder, for whatever reason, whatever people, you know, lash out, he was dealing with that. And that was something that I tried to keep in mind when I was doing the movie. But, yeah, he was just not in a great spot and he had all these things going on, you know, the stress of everything. Mm-hmm. He was just, yeah. Was he impressed when he was watching you? Like, Oh, I like the moves. You, you did good on that. Or yeah. yeah. Or did he ever interrupt a take? You're like, no, 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 no. Hold on a minute. I didn't do it that way. The final basketball scene he was there for. And I was like, Oh man, but you know, he would, he would let me know. He would be like, yeah, no, he was very encouraging. And, uh, you know, out of all the response from the movie, that's the biggest thing is when, you know, he watched it and he watched it with his family. And I'll never forget. It was like a, like a month or so ago. He called me. He had watched the movie. I mean, this is for him to talk about, but he basically watched the movie with his family and they were pretty emotional and just like he, he was emotional. And he, they were like, that's how you were. That was you. It was like watching you and, and have his family say that it was pretty cool because they were there. You know, he was. He was on one, you know, Mm -hmm. but his family and loved ones were the ones that were sitting back and watching his destruction. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's amazing because, you know what, I, you know, growing up, growing up in New York City, you you see that, you know, you see guys that are really talented and they just throw it away and you're like, yo, what do you do when you have a shot, man? (laughs) That's the whole thing with Danny. Danny will talk about, he's like, he's like a. Greg, you know, I keep going to Jackie, and when I'm interviewing him, trying to get to know him, I, all I can say is, what were you thinking? What were you thinking? Like, yeah. I'm like, I know, Danny, if I, you know, I wasn't good enough to have a shot at the NBA, you know, if I would have had a shot at the NBA, I would have been getting 12 hours of sleep, and, you know, yeah. you know, but that's what made Jackie, Jackie, you know, and that's what Jackie Ryan, there's only one Jackie Ryan, that's why there's a movie about him and not me. Right, but hold, but hold on a minute. You're part of that team, baby. You you're portraying him. I mean that. 
Do you know that feeling? I mean, listen, Greg, that's that's amazing just to portray somebody. And plus, even make it better, he's alive. So he could be like, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh, or yeah, 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 you killed it, you know? Yeah, yeah. What, what, what was it? What was it like working with Danny? I mean, Danny's such a great guy, and I love this guy. You know, um, is it is he the type of director just improvise if you have to, or what did he really he, want? He does a lot of improvising as long as we're keeping the story mm -hmm. moving. You know, every time he comes, he takes the script, he takes the sides, and throws the sides out. Don't worry about this. Don't worry about this. But Danny and I have a have like a a brother relationship like we became brothers he's like a big brother to me mm -hmm. so he was really pushing me the whole time you know i was in almost every scene and you know i think it was cool because he was pushing me and it was making me work harder and want to and want to do it for him like you know because i kind of looked up to him and wanted to make him proud so he kind of uh that's the kind of relationship we had and we would butt heads at times because He's so intense, and he was like a big brother, but I'm also not one to, like, take anything either, you know? So it was like a little, a bit of that, and but it was all good. It was all for the movie. He knows what he's doing. Oh, he definitely knows what he's doing. Um, So within the movie, too, yeah, look at that crew right there. Everyone see that? Yeah, everyone, everyone can see all these pictures right now. We're live, my man. We are live. That crew. Brings you a lot of memories, huh? Yeah, that was a, that was fun. That was fun. You know, I'm, yeah, looking, we I'm looking at your face with your hat on. You kind of look like Tom Brady a little bit. <laughs> My new best friend. I'll right. take it. I'll take Tommy all day long. Oh man, you guys. Uh, well, you know, we we own you guys. I mean, we owe you guys. Think about it. Like, you know, we're two and zero against you guys in in February, right? <laughs> Can't talk shit. You guys got us. <laughs> yeah, but you guys got much more titles than us, man. You got Charles Oakley on there. Yeah. Speaking of your, um, yeah, you know, people, you know, you know what it is? I guarantee people be like, yo, why is Eddie wearing a Mets shirt? Man, this ain't no Mets shirt. It's Nick's uh, shirt. <laughs> I knew that was Charles Oakley. Oh, okay. That was a machine right there in the 90s, right? It was a beast. A <laughs> Alan Houston, mm -hmm. Charles Oakley, John Starks. That was a team. So, like, um, in Maine, did you go to a lot of Celtics games? or oh, was... yes. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Diehard Celtics fan. They're playing right now. I know. Um, <laughs> I think they were up. They were up 10 when we started. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, because Maine doesn't have a damn anything. They don't have a team. So, we go down to Boston for the Sox games and, and the Celtics and the Bruins. Yeah, yeah that's just who you root for. You know, speaking of, this is what I'm very disappointed in, that you are a Red Sox fan, and you know no, See, so my father... Go ahead. ...who has eyes closed. I told you earlier, he's from Jersey, so I was brought up on the Yankees. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So, like, Donnie Baseball, that whole Jeter's, you know. Wow. But when you grow up there, you, you go to Fenway, you know? And yeah. And my brother's a cop, so he hooked it up. We got to go behind the Green Monster. It was so cool. So you were rooting so cool. for the Yankees while, while the Sox. I was rooting. I was rooting for the Yankees. My brother would root for the Sox. Yeah. My grandfather, like you know, like like I told you, the first time I ever saw my dad cry was when Nicky died. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So wow. he was brought up on that. Like, and my grandfather, you know, DiMaggio. He, they're they're from. Um, Patterson, mm -hmm. New Jersey. So they were, you know, my grandfather grew up watching, you know, DiMaggio and, and the Mick and all that, you know. So you, you're a sports guy then. You follow, <laughs> you know, you're not your typical L.A. guy that's like, huh, sports, what? No, you know what I mean? <laughs> that's, that's life. I mean, basketball really was my life before I was an actor. Sports are, that's my first love. You know, I I got I captured this uh, photo right here. I mean, I, I look I feel bad for the water bottle right there. I mean, that was a nice dunk. You know, <laughs> if you work out hard, you can dunk a water bottle on an eight and a half foot hoop. You know? Oh, that was eight and a half. Oh, you got to train hard. No, it might have been nine. It All definitely right. wasn't ten. I can tell but, you that. But, but you know what? It looked good when you were going up because on your Instagram video, it's like you're going slowly, that slow motion. And I'm like, oh, shit, my man got some ups right here. I was in Newport Beach. 
Well, that wasn't in Venice? I thought that was in Venice. No, no, that was in Newport. They had some courts there. That was cool. That was fun. Yeah, you listen. Now, listen, you're a good-looking bastard, all right? I mean, I'm sure girls go crazy for you, all right? So how did you meet your fiance? Okay. How, how did that happen? Did you so hit on, on her? I was on, or she hit I'm on sorry. you? Did you hit on no, her or she hit on you? I, I was on a boys trip in Mexico. Uh-huh. And uh, I was with my best friend, and we were, you know, having the time of our lives. And, you know, it's one of those things where, like, we're going to do this forever. We're single. This is going to be awesome. This is just the way we're going to live. And uh, the next day, I met her at the bar. Just like that? Just like that. And we kept in touch. She was with her family. So I, you know, didn't really do much, you know, talking to her. Just we exchanged numbers and kept in touch. And next thing you know, pretty crazy. So was it a long-distance relationship at first? It was long-distance at first. Wow. And, and, you know, we both decided that, you know, it's not going to work this way. Let's try it. Let me try it. Good for was, you, man. How, wow. It was all years ago. Yeah. So after Blackjack, what's going on now? So um, after Blackjack, I did my movie that I've been trying to get made for a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, as of now, it's called The Old Port. Um, it's a script that I've been trying to get made for like 14 years. Um, and then we did a bunch of rewrites on it. And, uh, this, this company, this guy local to Maine ended up financing it. Wow. And, uh, and we just finished, we just finished shooting. But how exciting is it that your film is coming out October 30th? I'm looking forward to it. Me too, man. Me too. Right? I can't, I, yeah, I can't I wait mean... for people to see it. I hope, you know, I hope. You know, it's either going to be in theaters or streaming somewhere. I don't know. Well, we can't control that. But what we can Thank control you. is you did a great job, Danny told me. I believe Thanks. him. You know, um, you know, I'm a sports guy. I, I would love to portray. I mean, I did I did portray Thurman Munson in the play. So Really? Yeah, yeah. That's and cool. uh, his wife gave me a huge compliment, said you sounded like him and everything. So, okay. yeah, it was a... Uh, you know, I was kind of well, nervous. I'm like, had, uh, my dad had his autograph growing up. He was a catcher, right? Yeah, catcher. Yeah, he died in an airplane crash in 1979, August 2nd, and he was only 32 years old at the time. Yeah, so he he was the captain. He was like the Jeter of the 70s. Yeah, yeah. You know, and um, but the fact that. You know, mine was a place. I couldn't show my hitting skills. I couldn't show my catching skills. You, yeah. but Thurman Munson, that's 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 cool. Yeah, you, you know, you had it's great. I mean, think about it. You wake up in the morning. You're there by six a.m. You're putting on t-shirts and a shorter tank top, and you're playing basketball. I mean, how awesome yeah. is that, man? It was cool. It was cool. Right? I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world. It was it was an honor to to play him. And you know, the biggest thing is is you know being able to. To you know, even besides the sports, to, to you know, connect in those scenes and, and be the lead and, and and grow as an actor and work with great people. You know, working with David Arquette was doing those scenes with him and we're butting heads. That was that was a dream come true. You know, and a guy like Arquette, he, you know, he would make you feel comfortable, right? Like when you're on set. He's the nicest. He really is. He's like the nicest guy you'll ever meet, like for real. Yeah. You've been. <laughs> yeah, he's just so so giving and. You've been around yeah. the game for a while, okay? I mean, look, you're 35, um, and you don't have to mention names, but are there some veteran actors out there when you were on set, you're like, damn, I can't believe this shit. I can't believe his attitude's like that or her attitude's like that, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen things. People mm -hmm. kind of acting unprofessionally on set. And I remember this one one time I was doing a, uh, a guest star, uh, on one of those, I won't name the show, but one of those crime shows. I've done a couple, so I, I won't name it. But um, one of the series regulars, like the camera guy, was trying to like get a really good shot of her and like zoom in, and it was mm -hmm. kind of raining. You know? And he bumped into her like pretty freaking lightly, you know. Mm -hmm. And she got so upset. She's a series regular, you know. If she, you know, she could make things happen if she wanted to in there, right. you know. And this camera guy 
like he was so scared and he felt so bad, you know, because she just let him have it. And it's just like I just remember it was early on in my career. I just remember like I'm never going to be like that, you know, just to make this. She made this guy feel so, you know, just so bad about it. Just a simple little mistake. And he was trying to get a cool shot of her. I don't know. Wow. Yeah, it's just not me. I just, I, I just, I, when I see stuff like that, I'm like, how, well, well, you know? Right, right. Has there any actors you got intimidated by, like, has a strong presence, you're like, holy shit, and you get nervous, like, on set? Has that yeah, ever happened? Um, God, what was I? I mean, I'm, I, yeah, you, you always want it, you're always insecure, you always want to, like, bring it, no yeah. matter who the actor is, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. You always want, you always feel, I, I always feel like I have something to prove. Right. So, but I don't think there's been a specific actor where I was like, oh, shit, you know? Right, right. I'd like to have that feeling one day, though, maybe. <laughs> you know? I mean, I think I feel that way every time, to be honest with you. I think that might be a good thing, though. Yeah, you know, you know as an actor, it's really hard. Let's say you bang out a take and you it was so good, and then all of a sudden the director is like, Yo, Greg, it was great, but the lighting, we fucked up, so let's do it again. You're like, oh, fuck. and you can't do it again exactly the same way. That's just reality as a human being, you know? Yeah. You could get close yeah, to it. Great. We've been, you've been there, right? Yeah. yeah. That's, you just got to gear up and do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, you're doing great. You Thank know, you, brother. I can't wait for the film to come out. It was really good Thank talking you. to you. Um, it's uh, it, it's good to talk to my uh, guys from uh, Maine. You know that yeah. bo that Boston yeah. attitude. And by the way, uh, Jimmy uh, Maddie also said, "Listen, he he don't take shit from nobody too. Don't think he's just that you know that like really good guy. You know he's a great guy, but you know he'll he'll stand up for himself." <laughs> yeah, you know? that was a, that was a past life. You know the Irish temper, but that you know that was Jackie too. So that worked. Oh, it worked perfectly, right? <laughs> Did you get hurt on on set? Um, yeah. I mean, I uh, like I was just so out of shape. You know, I didn't have time to really get in great shape for mm -hmm. the role. So, like, dude, my I was just sore all the time. Oh, you know, wow. all just right. not not in Jackie Ryan shape. <laughs> Well, shit! I'm looking at your pictures on Instagram. You look like you're ripped. You look like you work out. Oh, that's that's the lighting. That's the angles. Oh, okay. <laughs> Listen, I wish you the best of luck. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna end the live. But I'm gonna stay with me, okay? Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, brother. All thank right. you for having me. So remember, guys, October 30th, Blackjack, the Jackie Ryan story, played by my man Greg Finley in the house. We'll talk to you later. What's going on, guys? It's Greg Finley. If you guys want a great YouTube channel, shooting the shit about sports, acting, entertainment, go follow my boy Eddie Mata. Subscribe, like, do yourself a favor.